Welcome to Resilient Minds 365, where we discuss the resilient stories of entrepreneurs, professionals, and students with mental illnesses to encourage you to strive, thrive, and live in abundance. I'm your host, Cleone Crawford. Welcome to another episode of Resilient Minds 365, the podcast. I am your host, Cleone Crawford, and today we have a special guest with us. We are in Brampton. We are at the Brampton <laughs> Entrepreneur Center, and we have powerful Steve Kerr with us today. So, um, what, as you guys know, Resilient Minds 365 is a podcast where we tell the resilient stories of entrepreneurs, professionals, and students with mental illnesses to encourage you to strive, thrive, and live in abundance. I'm your host, Cleone Crawford. And so we have powerful Steve Kerr with us. So Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Where? Um, how did you get started with what you do? And just break it down for us. Okay, I don't know how far back you want me to go because you know when you ask a, a writer a question like that, he just might say, "It all started when I was six years old." <laughs> <laughs> I love your, it. Then your podcast never ends, right? Yeah, all, yeah, yeah, all your yeah. guests are sleeping and everything. But uh, yeah, um, I'm I'm powerful, Steve, and uh, uh, you know I, it's Steve Kerr, and then uh, the power came on, you know when. One, I, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and, you know, the Holy Spirit is living inside of me. So, you know, powerful Steve. And, yeah. Uh, I'm a speaker. And so whenever I came off the stage, the majority of people, they would say, wow, that was a real powerful message. Mm -hmm. So the word powerful just kind of resonate within me. And, and I just became powerful Steve. And uh, then Soulful Image magazine uh, with uh, Tracy Acadia and, and oh, long, yeah. God rest her soul. Yeah, they they recognized me as uh, one of the inspirators, uh, and I got an award, and so I I became uh, the king of inspiration, and that's how my brand was was built. Uh, powerful Steve, the king of inspiration, and I coined the phrase, "It's only when you're aiming high you spread your wings and truly fly." Love it. So I uh, start with that, and then I end with the short version of it: aim high, spread wings. Fly. So I was born in Montego Bay, Jamaica. I came here when I was six years old. I went through uh, heavy racism. I uh, didn't know that um, Brampton was in the past a KKK town. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. The um, the city was run by uh, the white supremacy. Um, and that was in the 60s. Wow. So we arrived here from Jamaica in 1971. My so God. we're talking about two years outside of the 60s. And so... Um, yeah, we had to travel with um, rocks in our school bag just to get to school. My God. Um, and then, of course, the parents was uh, coaching their children uh, not to become friends with us. And mm -hmm. so here am I, this happy-go-lucky six-year-old kid come from Jamaica, you know, with all this energy of uh, uh, extrovert. And after being beaten up by the system here, um, I became an introvert. Mm. You know, yeah. So, so yeah. So, so, so that's it. Um, so we immigrated from Jamaica to to Canada, um, and uh, I wanted to know my roots. I wanted to, you know, discover who I am because I watched a movie called Roots by Alex Haley, and so I asked the question one day, "Who am I?" Um, and then I eventually uh, discovered who I am. Uh, I'm actually from West Africa, oh. uh, Nigeria. And, uh, and that's where we're going yeah. this month. So there you go. Wow. Go on. And so I also do know um, my tribe, but I, I, I see that there's a, a grave problem with that, Cleone. And so I, I tend not to want to tell people what tribe I am, because there's a lot of tribal wars going on even today yeah um, and because of the fact that i'm from jamaica you know the yoruba tribe and the benin and and you know the ibu and they're all trying to recruit me to their tribe but i i just want to be recruited to africa you know what i mean I, yeah the, the I, continent the continent uh, I, I i say to people i'm a son of africa i don't really say yeah. what tribe i'm at because i just don't like the fact that we're still fighting 
yes. right? There, there still needs to be some healing and and needs to be some forgiveness. You know, we talk about you know reconciliation from the perspective of having you know the the white man pay us you know for all the years of slavery that you know we 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 built Europe, we 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 built you know America, Canada, and all these places, and um, nobody wants to really you know, give us the, the, the funds that we, we should be getting. Right. Yes. So that we deserve. But, but Cleone, I do strongly believe that we have to look within and that, that process needs to begin in house. Meaning are we forgiving each other? Because really, and truly it was my brother that cap captured me and brought me to Hey, man, right? You know, talk if, about it, brother. If he, can, if he can get me off the land, then he could what? Get my land. He could get my wives. He could probably <laughs> even get my kids if they're if they're young enough uh, to to forget their real dad. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that was what denotes your wealth, right? It was about how many wives you have, how many children you have, and and your livestock, right? How many goats and cows you have, and things like that. So that. There began the, the the tribal wars and and things like that, and I think that right now I I just hear too much of that go going on, Cleone, and uh, you know I'm I'm trying to figure out when am I going to end this story so you can ask me another question. <laughs> I'll ask you another question right now. Yeah, go ahead. So tell us about Stevie TV oh, your okay. podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about that, Cleone, because uh, you know. A part of my gifts and talent is to help people to find their gift and talent. Yes. So I told myself, you know what? I need to define myself that much more, right? So people could actually see something of a manifestation of what I'm talking about. You get what I'm saying? Right. If I'm telling people you got to discover yourself and I don't, I haven't done the process for myself, mm -hmm. then what? Right. So I asked myself, what is it that I really want to do to define me more? And I went on October. It was just October the 1st. Really? 21st. Yeah. I, I went on a 21 day, you know, fasting, prayer, consecration and so forth. And I decided to turn on Facebook and I decided to share with the individuals what I'm going through on a day to day basis. Did you but, just say the 21st? Yeah. The 1st to the 21st of October that just passed. The 21st is my, my grandmother's birthday and my God was her soul, my sister's birthday. Okay. Well, that's when I ended my my three times seven, my 21 day consecration. Uh -huh. And just yesterday I was speaking to one of my clients and they needed some uh, directions. And so she decided to go on a 21 day consecration. So I decided to join her as well. Mm -hmm. So officially yesterday I'm on another 21 day Right. So uh, that's going to actually, you know, help me once again in another dimension, because now I'm I've partnered with somebody because yeah. she she wants to get some directions in her life. And so we're going to be talking to each other every day for the next 21 days. Amazing. Right. Yeah. And it's really it's a pour into each other. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron, my sister. Yeah, yes. Love it. The fundamental principles of the word, when you apply them to your life, you start to see the definition of who you are because mm -hmm. at that, that point you're plugging into the source. Yes. Yeah. So Stevie TV, um, it was something that I started years ago and uh, it just wasn't the right time. Like this was back even before our mayor, Patrick Brown got elected. This is when Linda Jeffries was uh, mayor. Awesome. I started Stevie TV, but I uh, just didn't have the right, uh, the mindset right and and the right determination and so and then of course COVID-19 came and so forth and and it got shelved but when I went through this October 21 days and so forth it was almost like uh, the, the 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 inner voice you know I, I would say it different ways so people can relate because mm -hmm. you know I'm a Christian and and we're not talking to just Christians and so right. you have to understand if you don't want to honor God I'm not going to stop giving you the information because you're not honoring God. I'm just telling you, I give all the honor to God, but you know, the Holy Spirit is, is what gives the directives and uh, your intuition, right? I, I can use scientific words for you to understand because if you don't want to equate the name <sighs> of the intuition or the name of the voice that's up to you right yes. i happen to know the name and, and and i'll tell you the name whether you want to acknowledge it or not because hey if the sky is blue the sky is blue 
Yeah. Right? Whether you want to acknowledge the sky is blue or not, that's totally up to you. So, you know, I, oh, Anthony Robbins, Anthony Robbins spent years telling people, you know, awake the giant within, Yeah. which is very powerful. I like Anthony Robbins. He's done a lot of, a, a lot of great good for me. Right. But that was his position to present it that way. I decide to present, Hey, I happen to know the name of the giant, giant within, within, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's Jesus. Jesus. Right. So, you know, um, it, it's, it's just, you know, something, Cleone, I, I find it interesting that people are comfortable talking about sports. They're comfortable talking about all these other things. But the minute you start talking about God and talking about Jesus, all of a sudden people are offended. I, know. I mean, we just went through the darkest day, what I consider the year, which is Halloween, right? And and that's a religion, and 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 it centers around witchcraft and and the kingdom of darkness, mm. and and it's okay for us to have a celebration that they shut the city down and have all kind of parties of such. But the minute I say I'm going to have a party in the name of Jesus, all of a sudden, oh, oh. you get what I'm saying? Offended. Everybody's offended. But why is that? I don't. Why is that? Well, people, you know, it's because people want to live a certain type of lifestyle, and you know, and 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 sometimes me, their lifestyle gets. Uh, but it, me talking gets, about it, that's not stopping them from living their lifestyle. That's true. Why? Why are they offended? Because I mentioned the name Jesus. Uh, am I offended because they decide to dress up as a witch and <laughs> and and. Uh, we light candles and 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 pull out a Ouija board and mm -hmm. and 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 uh, say I want to talk to my ancestors and am I offended of that? No, I'm not offended. Right. I'll just tell them you're going to hell. <laughs> right. Oh God! Listen, the word says the truth shall set, set you, you free. free. Right? The truth shall set you free. Now there 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 are some people right that. They are concerned with what man is going to do to them. But you know what I'm concerned with? I'm concerned with what God is going to do. Because, you know, in the Constitution, it says what? He said that it, it, it is better for you to be afraid of him who can destroy both your body and soul versus him that can only destroy your body, right? That's man. Man could destroy your body, but he can't touch my soul. Okay, so tell us about your mental health story of resilience. What did you have to go through? What did you have to overcome? How did you make it? Okay, well, I went through uh, two. So I can tell you the the first one. I, I did start out by sharing with you that when we came to uh, uh, Canada in 1971, uh, Brampton was our destination. And, um, you know, heavy racisms. And so, you know, um, the challenges of not finding a friend, right? I, I had all kinds of friends in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And then to find out the reason why they don't want to be my friend is because of the color of my skin, something oh my I had God. no control over. But uh, my, my first uh, sign, you know, you learned this afterwards, right? But my first sign of my mental illness is I knelt down on my knees and, and I asked God to make me white. Yeah, I prayed to God and say, you know, make me white because okay we left jamaica and i'm surrounded by white people and and obviously they were offended by that and i didn't uh i didn't want to be standoutish i just wanted some friends yeah and so that was my first um exception of that and so i became very hardened i didn't trust any uh, white people or anything like that and uh uh, the first white person that I could honestly say that I trusted was um, my grade three teacher, Mr. Nichols, mm. uh, because he um, he brought me in and he, uh, you know, after coaxing me for a while, he said he's going to teach me something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. And um, uh, he taught me this poem called Jonathan Bing. And um, Jonathan Bing uh, became the catalyst of... Uh, uh, the other children seeing me as a human being and they I guess you could say they crossed the picket line you know they they rebelled against their parents and mm -hmm. um, became my friend um, yeah so so that was it for me and little did I know that right there was the beginning of my career as a speaker 
because mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was going to become a professional speaker. I was eight years old. What do I know, right? Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm 60 years old now, so I've been speaking for 52 years. Wow. Yeah, so Amazing. when you're speaking that long, you become the king of something. That's right? true. You become a master. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable in my skin to, to say the king of inspiration. I, I don't care who it offends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's who I am. So what did you have to do to overcome or bounce back from your low points? List all the resources that were applicable. Well, um, my first and foremost, my uh, bouncing back was through the word of God. Is Amen. Through, uh, reading, uh, studying, prayer, fasting, fellowship. So, you know, this fellowship is a support group, right? Uh, you know, you have people that, uh, you know, they have their support groups for alcoholic and drug abuse and things like that. So, um even back then when I was dealing with it, because, you know, back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, mm. nobody was talking about the word mental health. No. Right. That, that came on later on. So even though I was dealing with it, it wasn't labeled as as mental illness. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I, you know, go through that. And even even now you still go through little spells of, you know, I'm married for 37 years. I got seven kids and wow. um, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, it, things get overwhelming um, at times and things like that. And uh, you just got to be res resilient and you got to press on. So really and truly, um, yeah, it's good to have a support system. Um, but first and foremost, uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he's, he's my greatest support system. Uh, when I felt that uh, everybody had uh, turned their backs on me, uh, he never has. And so that's why I love him so much. And that's why I have no qualms with talking about him, him because I love him. He's he's my protector. He's he, he's my wisdom. He's he's my guide. He's my everything. Right. But my breath. Right. You know, Yahweh. <laughs> did you know that when you say Yahweh to say Yah, you actually inhale, and when uh -huh. you say Way, you actually exhale. Wow. And he says, "Let everything that has breath, breath praise if the I, Lord. Every time I say Yahweh, that's it. I'm I'm praising Him. Wow. Right? Did you also know that uh, the the DNA strand it has what's called bridges, and uh, when they count the bridges, right, the numbers it coincides with. Y H W H, the bridges oh. in your DNA, right? Meaning the the tenth letter of the Jewish alphabet and the fifth letter and so wow. forth. It's oh. Y H W H. So right from the very essence of your DNA strands, mm -hmm. it says Yahweh. And when you say Yahweh, you are actually worshiping God and every time you inhale and every time you exhale you are actually worshiping God so when people see the scripture when it says let everything that have breath they think it's talking about I'm I gotta open my mouth and say holy 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 thou art holy no the minute I went ah, I just worshiped God amen amen <laughs> can we lift an offering now <laughs> and all the offering and all the proceeds that lift today is going to go towards Cleone. So I'm asking you guys to send a donation, mm -hmm. send a donation. Listen, she's got to get to Nigeria, guys. Yeah. It's, it's a part of her journey. It's a part of her page and it's a part of her next book. Listen, I'm going to I'm going to reach out and I'm going to say this. Right. I'm going to say this. Right. Buy her next book. Right. Send thirty five dollars. And she'll get you a copy of her next book. Plain and simple, guys. Listen, how do you build a masterpiece? You go to the master that has all the pieces, okay? Mm -hmm. Once you go to the master that has all the pieces, he's going to let you know that you are a masterpiece. And he's going to let Cleone know that she's a masterpiece. But watch this. When Cleone and Steve are in her podcast, we are now together. We just created another masterpiece, yes. right? Your destiny helpers is important for you, right? No man is an island from that perspective. And so we need each other. Cleone's gift is not for her. No. It's for you. It's for all and, of us. And what she's doing now, it's not for her. It's for you. So to show some love, guys, I mean, listen to this. How many of you went out and you bought 
boxes of potato chips and chocolate bars to give out on Halloween days. And you guys must have spent $30, $35 on chocolate and bags of chips for kids that they now have to see the dentist. <laughs> let's be real, guys. Let's let's talk the truth, right? But here is an opportunity for you to say, you know what? Steve's absolutely right. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna support her. I'm gonna buy her next book and uh and and get her to to Africa. All right, that's that's it, guys. So so come on, let's 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 buy your next book. Wow, thank you very much, Steve. So how do we find you, powerful Steve, on Instagram? Well, you don't need to go on Instagram to find me. Just come down at 41 George Street and back. I'm here every day, nine to four, <laughs> unless I have an outside appointment. This is my office, guys. This is where I hang out. Love for you guys to come down and, you know, check out Stevie TV and I could probably interview you. But as she said, you know, I know what she's talking about. You could find me on Instagram, which is at Powerful Steve. And then on YouTube, same Powerful Steve, but then you got to add 1774 to it. And then my real name, which is Steve Kerr. You could just type that in Facebook and put Brampton too, guys, because, you know, I got a famous name, Steve Kerr of the Golden State Warriors, and he won. Yeah.